I welcome you tonight to our leadership development and it's wonderful to find that we're there even with the weather I wasn't expecting that I'll see such a crowd here the Lord will bless your faithfulness and the Lord will bless my faithfulness too the Bible says uh, love others as you love yourself so as I pray for you I have to pray for myself the Lord bless you today and the Lord increase you today grant your understanding revelation today in Jesus name this work will prosper in your hands let's pray together father we thank you for your faithful people thank you for bringing our brothers and sisters Thank you for the spirit of commitment and consecration you've given to everyone. That whether things are tough or hard, and whether the road is clear or whatever, your people are always there. Lord, I pray you open the windows of heaven upon everyone. Bless and reward their faithfulness in Jesus' name. Open our eyes of understanding tonight. Help us to see. Help us to understand. Help us, Lord, to take in everything you are giving to us in Jesus' name. Lift your people higher. Confirm the blessing upon every life. Increase your people. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We're reading from 2 Chronicles chapter 33. And we're reading from verse 9 all through to verse 16. 2 Chronicles chapter 33 from verse 9. So Manasseh made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err, to go astray, and to do worse than the heathen whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. And the Lord spake unto Manasseh and to his people, but they would not hack him. Verse 11, Wherefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the hosts of Assyria, which took Manasseh among sons, and bound him with fetters and carried him to Babylon. And when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the Lord God of his fathers and, pray, and prayed unto him. And he was entreated of him and heard his supplication and brought him again to Jerusalem and into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. Now after this, he built a wall without outside the city of David, on the west side of Gihon, in the valley, even to the entering in at the fish gate and compassed about Ophel and raised it up a very to a very great height and put captains of war in all the first cities of Judah and he took away the strange gods and the idol out of the house of the Lord and all the altars that he had built in the mount of the house of the Lord and in Jerusalem and cast them out of the city. Verse 16, and he repaired the altar of the Lord and sacrificed their own peace offerings and thank offerings and commanded Judah to serve the Lord God of Israel. As you look at those verses that we have read, there's something that comes out very clearly. And you'll see more of that as we go into the message. The message tonight is titled, 
the effectiveness of God's affection when admonition fails when the spoken word fails when the spoken revelation fails when the message of the prophets when that message fails the effectiveness of God's affection the effectiveness of God's affection when admonition fails God our heavenly father is the ancient of days as the eternal God all his people all the priests all the princes all the prophets are children whatever their age somebody is a hundred years of age is a little child because God is older because is as old as a thousand a million a trillion years eternal everlasting and because of the ancient of days even if somebody were hundred years of age even a thousand years of age that's a little child in the sight of the almighty god therefore whatever the age whatever the position whatever the opportunities in life he regards everyone as a little child and he loves each individual and he loves his chosen nation he loves his eternal plan and he does all things in line with that love whatever god does whatever he did to manasseh to bring him back it's called affliction it's called chastisement it's called oppression and it's bound or tons, whatever it was, it was out of his love. His word is spoken out of love. And his rod is administered out of love. And as we look at this passage, number one, there was love for Manasseh. So that Manasseh as an individual will not perish, will not die in sin and be lost. Number two, love towards abraham because god had promised abraham his friend that out of him all the families of the earth will be blessed and he had chosen israel as a nation coming out of abraham and jesus the savior of the world was to come through that nation of israel and if he wiped out manasseh and wiped out Israel, then his love for Abraham and for bringing Jesus eventually the savior of the world that will be disturbed or distracted or destroyed. And therefore for his love towards Abraham, that's why he did what he did, for his love towards David, because as David came later, he promised David and he said, out of your family, there will be the Messiah that will come, the King. And out of his love for Israel, and out of his love for the whole world. So, the action of God towards Manasseh is out of love and ultimately the love to preserve the nation. So that the Savior will come through that nation. Christ was to come through them. We're coming to First Corinthians chapter 14. First Corinthians chapter 14. We're reading from verse 20. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 20. Brethren, be not children in understanding. How be each in malice be children, but in understanding be men. The passage we're looking at tonight calls for understanding, calls for wisdom that we understand the action of God. We understand the love of God. We understand the affection of God for the nation. We're coming to Proverbs chapter 29, reading from verse 15. Proverbs chapter 29, and I'm reading from verse 15. It tells us in verse 15, the rod and reproof give wisdom the rod and as 
God Almighty himself applied the rod on this king Manasseh. He brought wisdom. But a child led to himself, bringeth his mother to shame. Think of Manasseh, a relationship to God. A little child, how old was he when he began to reign, 12 years of age? Even to us, he'll be a child. And to the Almighty God, he was a child. It was led to himself. He did whatever I wanted to do. And God will say, well, he's a king. Let him do whatever I wants to do. He'll bring shame, not only to his mother. He'll bring shame to the mother nation. He'll bring shame to the Almighty God. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increases. But righteous, the righteous shall see their fall. Correct thy son. And God has to correct those people. The throne was the throne of God. The nation was the nation of God. All the opportunity they had to minister, it was from God. And therefore, he had the right to correct them. And he says, correct thy son, and he shall give the rest. Yea, he shall give the light to thy soul. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. A servant will not be corrected by words. Manasseh was not going to be corrected by words, by speaking, by messages, by prophecies, by what the prophets were saying. For though he understand, for though he understood, he will not answer. Manasseh did not answer. And so the rod became necessary we're looking at micah micah i'm reading here from chapter 6 verse 9 micah chapter 6 reading from verse 9 it says in micah chapter 6 verse 9 the lord's voice cries unto the city and the man of wisdom shall see his name Hear ye the rod. The rod has a message. The rod has a voice. Hear ye the rod, and who has appointed it? The Lord appointed the rod, appointed affliction for Manasseh, and it is out of his love. And then the instruction is hear the message that the rod carries. I say, we're reading from verse chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26. We're reading from verse 9. Isaiah 26. Reading from verse 9. Here he tells us in verse 9. Isaiah 26. With my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. For when thy judgments are in the earth when your chastisement comes on the earth when affliction comes on people like manasseh on the earth the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness what they will not learn what they will not know by the spoken word, by the ministry of the prophets, they will learn when the judgments, the chastisement, the affliction comes upon them. Look at verse 10. Let favor be showed to the wicked, yet they will not learn righteousness. Manasseh, show him favor, give him promises, shower the blessings on him, encourage him, motivate him remind him of the legacy that his father left he will not learn righteousness in the land of uprightness will he deal unjustly and will not behold the majesty of the lord but when thy judgment sign the earth the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness proverbs chapter 3 in proverbs chapter 3 reading from verse 12 proverbs chapter 3 verse 12 for whom the lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father the son in whom he delighteth. the chastisement 
the affliction, the rod of correction was because of God's love. Hebrews chapter 12, reading from verse 6. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastineth and scourges. That's affliction. That's suffering. That's punishment. That's what happened to Manasseh. Scourges every son whom he receiveth. Revelation chapter 3. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 19. Revelation chapter 3, verse 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chase him. Here is the Lord Jesus Christ telling us affliction is not out of hatred. Discipline is not out of hatred. Chastisement coming from the Lord is not out of hatred. It's not because it was abandoned. No, it's because of the love of God. Because it says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chase him. Be zealous therefore and repent. Psalm 119. In Psalm 119, reading from verse 67. Psalm 119, verse 67. In verse 67, before I was afflicted, I went astray. I would have remained out there, far away from the Lord, far away from the kingdom. If I wasn't afflicted, before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now, after that affliction, have I kept thy word. The affliction brought me back. And the chastisement brought me back. The rebuke brought me back. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now have I kept thy word. Look at verse 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. It is good for me. And Manasseh could have said that too. After the affliction, it brought him back to repentance. Brought him back total restoration. Brought him back that he was able to reform everything he had destroyed. It says in verse 71, It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. Look at verse 75. In verse 75, I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right, and that thou in faithfulness has afflicted me. It says, Lord, I know. Looking back now and looking at what happened to me and looking at the result and looking at the salutary effect in my life, now I know that in faithfulness I have been afflicted. And it says that the depths of the knowledge of God, the depths of the glory of God, the depths, depths of, the, of the majesty of God is unfathomable. Look at Romans chapter 11. He knew exactly what will make this man, Manasseh, repent. He knows every heart. He knows every life. He knows the string to pull. And he knows the pressure to bring. And he knows the exact affliction. He knows the measure. He knows the height. He knows the pain. He knows the suffering. He knows what it will take for that man to turn around. What we don't know, he knows. That's why Romans chapter 11 verse 33 says, So the depths of the riches both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. Oh, the depths of the riches both of the wisdom, both of the love, both of the understanding of God. How unsearchable are his judgments? How unsearchable are his afflictions? How unsearchable are his chastisements? How unsearchable is his rod and his waste past finding out? His ways past finding out three things we're looking at today number one 
the fruitful ministry in the affliction of the proud. The fruitful ministry in the affliction of the proud. Point number two, the Father's mercy in his affection for the penitent. The Father's mercy in his affection for the penitent. Point number three, the faithful messengers of the Almighty to his people. The faithful messengers of the Almighty to his people. Number one. Tell me number one. Uh, you know I'm going to tell you to tell me out aloud. Okay, you're waking up. Tell me point number one. The fruitful ministry in the affliction of the proud. We're coming back to Second Chronicles chapter 33. Second Chronicles chapter 33. And here we're reading from verse 9 to verse 12. Second Chronicles chapter 33. Reading from verse 9 to verse 12. So Manasseh made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err, to sin, to fall, to do evil, to go astray, and to do worse than the heathen whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. And the Lord spake to Manasseh and to his people, but they will not hack him. The message failed. The prophecies failed. The threatenings failed. Everything the prophet said fell to the ground. Manasseh will not hear, and the people will not hear. Wherefore, in verse 11, wherefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the host of the kings of Assyria, which took Manasseh among thorns. You know what that means? It's like taking barbed wire to tie a person. It's like taking barbed wire to put him under control and just bind him as if you're binding with just wires and ropes. And they bound him with fetters. And they carried him to Babylon. All through that journey, from Jerusalem to Babylon, the barbed wire was around him. All the fetters were around him. He suffered. It was then he began to think, what did I do this? The God of my fathers I forsook. He could have protected me. But now I wasn't protected. Look at the suffering, and this is just the beginning. Look at verse 12. And when he was in affliction, when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God, and he humbled himself. How? Greatly. Before the God of his fathers. Job chapter 33. In Job chapter 33, we're reading from verse 14. Job chapter 33 verse 14 For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. Manasseh is not alone. Many people are like Manasseh. The message of the word comes, repent, they don't perceive, turn around, they don't perceive, call upon the name of the Lord your God, they do not perceive. It says, for God speaketh once, yet twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, then he opened their ears, the ears of men, and sealeth their instruction, that he may withdraw man from his purpose. The reason why God is uh, bringing the message and the reason why he gives a dream and the reason why he brings the vision is to withdraw man from his purpose. Look at the purpose of Manasseh to lead the people of God astray. And he actually did it. And every message the Lord sent to him was to make him turn around and to withdraw him from his purpose and to hide pride from man. He kept back his soul from the pitch. 
is life from perishing by the sword. Look at verse 19 now. He is just chastened also with pain upon his bed. And the multitude of his bones was strong pain, so that his life abhors bread, and his soul didn't meet, his flesh is consumed away that it cannot be seen, and his bones that were not seen stick out. Yea, his soul draws near unto the grave, and his life to the destroyers, if there be a messenger with him, that will tell him, that will interpret to him. You know, Manasseh, you know, young man, you know, young woman, you know, friend, what's happening to you? The hand of God is in this. If there is a messenger, an interpreter, one among a thousand to show unto man his uprightness, then he is gracious unto him and says, Deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. His flesh shall be fresher than a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. He shall pray unto God. That's what happened to Manasseh when the affliction came. When he was bound with thorns, and when he was bound with fetters, when they carried him to a strange land, when he, and he knew that days could be an end, and he could suffer and die, and then be lost, he shall pray unto God, and he will be favorable unto him. He shall see his face with joy, for he will render unto man his righteousness. In verse 27, he looketh upon men, and if any say, I have sinned. That's what he's driving at. That's why the affliction came. The message did not penetrate. The prophecies did not penetrate. The words did not penetrate. Now, the affliction touched his flesh, went to his soul, went to his heart, and reached him at the very center of his being. And now he could say, I have sinned and perverted that which was right, and it profited me not. Then, look at verse 28, he will deliver his soul from going down into the pit. His life shall see the light. Then it tells us, Lo, all these things walketh God oftentimes with man. That's the message, and that is the way God walks. Look at chapter 36, Job 36, we're looking at verse 8. Job chapter 36, we're looking at it from verse 8. And if they be bound with fetters, look at that. Manasseh, when such people are bound with fetters and beholding with cords of affliction, Manasseh, people like Manasseh, when they have had the word and they will not budge, when they have had prophecies and they will not yield, and when evangelists have run after them and prophets and preachers and pastors have run after them and they will not hear, and then they are held in courts of affliction, then he shows them their work and their transgressions that they have exceeded, that they have gone too far, too far. They've done things so abominable, even beyond the nations around them. Look at verse 10. He openeth also their ear to discipline. The declaration has not worked, and so he opens their ears to discipline. The word of God has not penetrated them, so he opened their ears to chastisement and commanded that they return from iniquity. If they obey and serve him, if they say, now I see. I didn't understand before. I didn't know that this was so terrible. I felt I was just uh, making use of my liberty. Now I saw that my liberty has led me astray and led the nation astray. If they will not turn around, if they will obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. I want to hear an amen. 
Jonah chapter 2 Jonah chapter 2 you remember the story of Jonah he knew the will of God he knew the errand that he was to carry out he knew the work he was to do deliberately he went the other direction deliberately he was going to disobey the Lord I will not do that I will not go to Nineveh and then God sent the storm after him it's because of his love number one is love for Jonah that he will not die in disobedience and rebellion number two is love for the people of Nineveh all those thousands of people that will not perish like that because God is not willing that anybody should perish and because of his love he sent that storm but that did not wake up Jonah and when those mariners said what are we going to say carry me and throw me to the sea no problem I know it's because of me this is coming upon you and those people tried they didn't want to do that eventually they took him up and they threw him into the sea and the sea was calm but now he was singled out the affliction was still there come to Jonah chapter 2 Jonah chapter 2 I'm reading from verse 1 then Jonah prayed not until then not until then it was saying I'm going to fight it out I will not go to Nineveh I will not do it let God do what he will do bring a storm on the sea and make all the people lose everything they have in the ship and throw into the sea I will not go I'll fight this to the very end those people they do not merit me going to them giving the message i will not and then it was now in the belly of the fish then he said then when he came to the point he couldn't bear it anymore tell me if somebody is fighting with god who is going to win god is going to win because if this one fails, he'll do another. If that one fails, he'll do another. Until Manasseh will submit. Until Jonah will submit. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. Look at this verse 2. And said, I cried by reason of, tell me, my affliction unto the Lord. Affliction, affliction. That's what God used for Manasseh. And that's what he used for this prodigal prophet. I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell cried I. He said, it was like hell. And if it is so terrible like this here, if I die in this condition and then go to the other hell everlasting, you know, what will it look like? And he heard my voice, for thou hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the floods compass me about, all thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters compass me about, even to the soul. It's not just my flesh, it got to my soul. The depths closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottom of the mountains, and the earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought me up, my, brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thy holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. I was observing some lying vanities. I deceived myself. I deluded myself. I cajoled myself. I thought I could run away from God. They that observe lying vanities uh, forsake their own mercies. But now I will sacrifice unto thee. Lord, I'm back. Lord, I will do what you want me to do. 
I will sacrifice with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that which I have vowed. As a prophet, I have vowed. I will declare your word anywhere, anytime. I'm going to declare your word. That's my vow. I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Verse 10, everybody read verse 10, 1, 2, 3, go. Praise the Lord. That's what the Lord was waiting for. It's not to destroy. It's out of love. It's to recover the man. It's to restore the man. And when he said, now I'm ready. I repent. I turn. I'm going to pay my vow. I will sacrifice. Whatever sacrifice it takes, I'm going to obey you. Then the Lord spake unto the fish, and he vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. What if Jonah did not yield at that time? I want you to come to Leviticus chapter 26. Leviticus chapter 26. In Leviticus chapter 26, here is what God said that he will do. If the people did not obey him, look at him from verse 14. Leviticus chapter 26 verse 14. But if he will not hearken unto me, and will not do all these commandments and if ye despise my statutes if your soul abhor my judgments so that ye will not do all my commandments that i that i will break that she, uh, that she break my covenant and i also will do this unto you i will even appoint over you terror consumption and burning egg that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart and ye shall sow your seed in vain for your enemies shall eat it and i will set my face against you and ye shall be slain before your enemies that and they that hate you shall reign over you and ye shall flee when none pursueth and if ye will not yet for all this hacking unto me then i will punish you seven times more for your sins you see what he's driving at he said if you rebel if you forsake me if you do like manasseh this is what i will do hoping that that will make you come back but if you don't come back because of that first level of affliction see what will follow look at verse 18 now and if ye will not yet for all this hacking unto me then i will punish you seven times more for your sins and i will break the pride of your power and i will make you your heaven as iron and your earth as brass and your strength shall be spent in vain for your land shall not yield her increase neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruits look at verse 21 and if ye walk contrary unto me that is at the second level of sevenfold affliction if they will still not yield you know why because he loved them because it's not going to say okay you're not yielding that's okay for you get lost i go to other people no not at all he said i'm going to concentrate on you and i will multiply the affliction sevenfold until my purpose for you is fulfilled god's purpose for you to for bringing you into this kingdom will be fulfilled in jesus name and there's no need for affliction since you know that god is going to be at it and god is going to keep on uh, making the heat hotter until you yield i think the best thing is to just say god no need for affliction i yield somebody there i yield look at verse 21 and if you walk contrary unto me and will not hearken unto me i will bring even seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins and i will also send wild beasts among you which shall rob you of your children and destroy your cattle and make you few in number and your highway shall be desolate and 
if ye will not be reformed by me by these things but will walk contrary unto me it says now this is the third time i'm multiplying it sevenfold and if you will still not yield in verse 24 then will i also walk contrary unto you and will punish you yet seven times for your sins and i will bring a search upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant he it said it's a controversy he it said it's the quarrel of my covenant and when ye are gathered together within your cities i will send pestilence among you and ye shall be dis delivered into the hands of the enemy and when i have broken the staff of your bread ten women shall bake your bread in one oven and they shall deliver you bread again by way and ye shall eat and not be satisfied. Verse 27, if ye will not for all this hearken unto me, but walk contrary to me, then will I walk contrary to you also in fury. And I, even I, will chastise you, tell me, seven times for your sins. Now you can see from what we are reading here that God made to carry it to the final conclusion until the Manasseh will yield. And I pray we'll not allow God to continue something like that before we yield. Lord, I surrender. Say it now. Lord, I yield. His love will never fail in your life. I said his love will never fail in your life. Affliction is not necessary. If we hear the message and if we yield to him and surrender to him, all that affliction seven times more, seven times more, seven times more will not be necessary. We're coming to Osea, Osea chapter 5. Hosea chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 13. Hosea chapter 5, verse 13. When Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah saw his wound, then went Ephraim to Assyria and said to King Jerem, Yet could not he heal you, nor kill you of your wound, for I will be unto Ephraim as a lion, and as a young lion of the, to the house of Judah, I, even I will tear and go away. I will make, I will take away and none shall rescue him. Look at verse 15. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense. That's what he's waiting for. I will go. He says, I'll tear them. I'll afflict them. I'll chastise them, I'll scorch them, then I will go to my place, that's to heaven, till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face in their, tell me, tell me out aloud, in their affliction, what will they do? They will seek me early, chapter 6, verse 1, come. Let us return unto the Lord. That's the result of the affliction. That's the fruit of the affliction. And that is the outcome of the affliction. Because God had said, I will afflict them. I will chastise them. Then I will return to my place until they seek my face in their affliction. They will seek me early. And now they are seeking the Lord. Chapter 6, come. Let us return unto the Lord. For he has torn. They knew it was he that did it. That did it. They knew the enemy nations could do nothing. The enemies could do nothing except God permitted it. They said he has torn and he will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us. In the third day will he raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know. If we follow on to know the Lord is going forth, is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter rain and the former rain on the earth. Look at chapter 10, Hosea chapter 10. 
reading from verse 9. Hosea chapter 10, verse 9. O Israel, that was seen from the days of Gibeah. And there they stood the battle in Gibeah against the children of iniquity, did not overtake them. It is in my desire that I should chastise them. The Almighty God will say, It's my desire, it's my plan. Because of their sin, because of their wordness, it is my desire that I should chastise them. And the people shall be gathered against them when they shall bind themselves into two furrows. Ephraim is an heifer that is taught and loveth to tread out the corn. But I passed over upon her fair neck. I will make Ephraim to ride, and Judah shall plow, and Jacob shall break his cords. What's going to be the result? Verse 12, sow to yourself in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your final ground. That will stop the affliction. That will stop the chastisement. It says, sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord. Do you want him to continue the affliction, Manasseh? And Jonah, do you want the trouble to continue? It is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. He'll rain righteousness upon you. Hosea we'll chapter 14, verse 1. This is the purpose. This is the end result. O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God. For thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. Take with your words and turn to the Lord and say unto him, Take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. They are now praying for restoration, salvation by grace. So will we render the calves of our leaves. Asher shall not save us. We will not ride upon horses. Neither will we say any more to the work of our hands. Ye are our gods. This repentance, they wanted restoration. For in thee, the fatherless findeth mercy. I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. For mine anger is turned away from him. I will be as a dew unto Israel. He shall grow as the lily and cast forth his roots as Lebanon. His branches shall spread and his beauty shall be as the olive tree and his smell as Lebanon. They that dwell under a shadow shall return. Your converts will return. Your sons and daughters will return. It says, they shall revive as the corn and grow as the vine. The saints thereof shall be as the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim shall say, what have I to do any more with idols? Total repentance, total restoration. I have heard him and observed him. I am like a green fir tree. From me is thy fruit found. Who is wise? And he shall understand these things. Prudent? And he shall know them. For the ways of the Lord are right, and the just shall walk in them. But the transgressors shall fall therein. So you see the fruitful ministry in the affliction of the proud. God's love speaks to his people. Admonition is the first means of instruction. When that fails, affliction is the second, the final method of getting man's attention. Think about something. He would not have been recovered. He would not have been retrieved from his way of defilement without losing his sight, losing his strength, and without all that he went through. Think about Jonah. Think about Saul of Tarsus. He might not have been restored. He might not have been redeemed without the frightening experience on the way to Damascus. And Manasseh and the people 
under his leadership would, would have been lost and they would have perished forever without the ministry of God's chastening rod. Think about the New Testament. The centurion would not have come to Christ were it not for the servant that was sick, tormented. Jairus, the ruler of the synagogue, would not have come to Christ were it not for the daughter that was sick to the point of death. The Syrophoenician, the Syrophoenician woman and many others in the New Testament will not have known Christ without the affliction that came upon them, that brought them. Divine chastisement was a necessary and essential and important significant ministry that brought many people to the lord and you think about even yourself look at what brought you to christ what were you going through some people had no challenges they just came and had the gospel other people there were some things that drove them to the lord whatever it is thank god we are in i say thank god we are in i pray you'll never go away from the lord again in jesus name Point number two, the Father's mercy. The Father's mercy in his affection for the penitent. The Father's mercy in his affection for the penitent. Look at Lamentation chapter 3. Lamentation chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 31. Lamentation chapter 3. Reading from verse 31, very important, very important. Lamentation chapter 3, verse 31. For the Lord will not cast off forever. Though he cause grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. He'll have mercy upon everyone. Look at verse 33. For he does not afflict willingly. He doesn't do it willingly. It's like when he's driven to the wall. When there's no other thing that will help. When the message will not penetrate. And when the declaration will not hold any root in the hearts of people. Then God has to bring affliction eventually. It says, for he does not afflict willingly. No grieve the children of men. If he has to do it, it's for a purpose. We're coming to Second Chronicles chapter 33. Second Chronicles chapter 33. And here we're reading from verse 12. Second Chronicles chapter 33, reading from verse 12. And when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God. He waited this long, and he waited too long. He waited, he couldn't see the hand of God, the mercy of God, the love of God. He couldn't see the invitation of God to him until when he was in affliction, in a strange land, in Babylon. It says, and when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God and humbled himself, how? Greatly before the God of his fathers and he prayed unto him and he was entreated of him and he heard the supplication and he brought him again to Jerusalem no matter how far somebody has gone far away in Babylon if he repents over there he'll come back to Jerusalem into his kingdom then Manasseh knew that the Lord was God God is God and when that affliction comes and anyone calls upon the Lord, the Lord will restore that person. Look at Psalm 103, Psalm 103. I'm reading from verse 8. Psalm 103, verse 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, he will not always rebuke. He will not always chastise. Neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us at our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens is high 
above the earth so great is his mercy towards them that fear him as far as the east is from the west so far as he removes our transgressions from us that's what he did for Manasseh eventually is that another thought or is that what God had said he will do? That's what God said he will do before. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Reading from verse 13. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Verse 13. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. The Lord is saying, Israel, you know, whatever you are going through, it's not Satan. It's not the enemy. The enemy couldn't have any power over you if I didn't allow them. And if heaven is shut up, it's not, uh, you know, somebody, a rain holder somewhere that is holding the rain. It's me. It's the almighty God. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land. Or if I send pestilence among my people. Because of their sin, all he's waiting for is in verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, which shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. That's what he wanted of Manasseh. That's what he wanted of the people of Judah. That's, a, that's what he wants today of all the people who are suffering any calamity. And they're wondering, why this? How could this be? Look at the promises the Lord has given us. And yet, I'm going through all this. It says, if they turn from their wicked ways, then when I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin. Somebody said, Amen. Amen. I will heal their land. It will heal in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 12. Second Chronicles chapter 12, reading from verse 5. Second Chronicles chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 5. Here it tells us in verse 5, Then Shemaiah the prophet came to Rehoboam and to the princes of Judah that were gathered together to Jerusalem because of Shishak and said unto them, Thus says the Lord, Ye have forsaken me. Therefore have I also left you in the hand of Shishak, whereupon the princes of Israel and the king humbled themselves, and they said, The Lord is righteous. Then the Lord saw that they humbled themselves, and the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah, saying, they have humbled themselves, therefore I will not destroy them. They have humbled themselves, therefore I will not destroy them. But I will grant them some deliverance, and my wrath shall not be poured out upon Jerusalem by the hand of Shishak. Amen. Verse 12. In verse 12, and when he humbled himself, the wrath of the Lord turned from him. That's what the Lord is waiting for. Affliction comes, and instead of just saying, I don't know why this is so, prayer warriors have prayed, the pastor has prayed. Looks like the revival they are talking about is, you know, it's not uh, really uh, there because it's not flowing to my side. If all that prayer has been prayed and, uh, you know, God is answering prayer, why am I still like this? Look in word. It says, when he humbled himself, not when he complained, not when he was laying blame on the prophets and the people, but when he humbled himself, the wrath of the Lord turned from him that he would not destroy him altogether. And also in Judah, Things went well. Did you hear that? In your family, things go well. In your ministry, things will go well. 
and in every one of those children you are laboring on you send them to secondary you send them to primary you send them to college university things will go well and in all the labor of your hand things will go well the Lord is a merciful God and he made things to go well all he's looking for is that we're humble in his sight Isaiah chapter 57 verse 15 Isaiah chapter 57 and we're reading from verse 15 Isaiah chapter 57 reading from verse 15 for thus says the high and the lofty one that inhabiteth eternity whose name is holy i dwell in the high and lofty and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and a humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones you see when we come before the lord and we're not complaining and we're saying if anything bad has happened already lord it must be my fault it must be my prayerlessness it must be my carelessness it must be my pride one way or the other it must be my misunderstanding of your holy covenant the fault is not with you the fault is with me and we humble ourselves look at verse 16 for i will not contend forever neither will i always be wrath for the spirit shall fail before me and the soul which i have made for the iniquity of his covetousness was i wrath and smote him and i hid me i was wrath and he went on forwardly in the way of his heart verse 18 i have seen his ways i will heal him Amen. i would lead him also and restore comfort unto him and to his mourners you see when he sees repentance and when he sees humility good things will come Amen. that's why we have job chapter 34 job chapter 34 reading from verse 31 job chapter 34 verse 31 surely it is meet suitable it's right to be said unto god i have borne chastisement i have seen affliction i have seen trouble i have seen oppression i have borne chastisement I will not offend anymore. That which I see not, teach thou me. If I have done iniquity, if I have done iniquity, I will do no more. And the Lord will answer our prayers. And brother, you in particular, the Lord will answer your prayer. Sister, my daughter, you in particular, the Lord will answer your prayers. Amen. Tears will not continue forever. Amen. Oppression will not continue forever. The mercy of the Lord will flow into every one of your lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Our God is a merciful Father. He responds favorably and promptly to true repentance from His sincere, honest, humble heart. The Lord Jesus is our savior is our sanctifier the lord jesus is redeemer and restorer the lord jesus is healer and helper and lord jesus christ is deliverer and defender is our lord is our leader his master is mediator is messiah the lord jesus christ is shepherd and shorty and he is a merciful high priest he responds to genuine repentance from a meek, lowly, humble heart. In his mercy, God will forgive. I said in his mercy, God will forgive. He saves and he restores the soul. He pardons and he relieves from affliction. He sets free. He breaks the yokes of oppression. He ransoms. He redeems from the taskmaster. He forgets the past and he begins a new relationship. 
it justifies and it grants eternal joy he receives and he transforms the greatest of persecutors to become the greatest of preachers and if he could do that for Saul and he became Paul the apostle the heights are before you you will go further you'll go up higher in Jesus name because God is a merciful God his mercy will reach out to everyone we'll come to point number three the faithful messengers of the Almighty to his people the faithful messengers of the Almighty to his people we're coming to second Chronicles chapter 36 second Chronicles chapter 36 we're reading from verse 15 second Chronicles chapter 36 verse 15 and the Lord God of their father sent to them by his messengers rising up betimes and sending because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. The Lord sent messengers. And today, the Lord is looking for messengers or saying, those who are going to be faithful. And those who are going to take the word, the good news, the word of grace, the word of forgiveness, the word of restoration, the word of his power, and take it to the people that are waiting, will be the messengers of the Lord in Jesus' name. Faithful, fervent, yielded, committed, prompt, getting to the people before they are lost. Isaiah chapter 44. Isaiah chapter 44. I'm reading from verse 24. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 24. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer, He that formed thee from the wombs, from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things. He made you, He created you, and stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself that frustrated the tokens of the liars and make it diviners mad that turneth wise men backward and maketh their knowledge foolish that confirmeth the word of his servant as you go forth as a messenger of the lord a brother a sister he will confirm the word of his servant and performance the counsel of his messengers that is the counseling you give and the word of assurance you give to the people as you call them to repentance the lord will perform the counsel of his messengers in jesus name that says to jerusalem thou shalt be inhabited and to the cities of judah ye shall be built and i will raise up the decayed places thereof he'll do it through you through me through us in jesus name we're going to be faithful we're going to be fervent and we're going to be prompt in going out of the message and telling the manasses over there that the word of god has come if they will repent the mercy of god will come unto them in Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 23. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 23. But this sea commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God. And ye shall be my people. Walk ye in all the ways that have commanded you, that it may be well with you. I said it will be well with you. Verse 25, since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have even sent unto you my servants the prophets. I have sent unto you my servants the prophets. And the Lord is sending us today. Early, daily rising up early and sending them daily rising up early and sending them he's sending you today you will give the message to the people 
Acts chapter 5, Acts chapter 5, we're reading from verse 19. Acts chapter 5, reading from verse 19. In Acts chapter 5, verse 19, but the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors. Your prison doors are open. Amen. And it seems that binds you, holding you down, they're removed in Jesus' name. And he brought them forth and said, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. The Lord has commanded us, rise up and go and give them the word, all the words to the people. Maybe you are sitting over there, we're doing that already. We're doing that already. Well, we're doing a part of it. God has a redeeming, redemptive message for everyone in the land, everyone in the nation. He has given, he has the message of good news to every sinner in every society. But we have neglected some. Number one, the Manasses in the land. The Manasses in this land. The leaders are their rulers. And they're leading the people astray. And they have crowds following after them. We have not pinpointed them. We have not isolated them. We have not identified them. We have not gone to those Manasses and given them the word. Number two, there are miscreants in the land. The people that are just like, it's like they are made for no purpose. That's what they think, but they are the creatures of God. And they are just roaming the streets, and they cause trouble here, and they cause trouble there. We have neglected the uh, Manasses in the land. We have neglected the miscreants and the mad men. They are mad. It's like they are mad for evil. And they even say they are for evil. Either they are thugs or they are this or they are that. We have not given the message to them. Yes, we preach, we throw out a general message and we go here, we go there. Reach the Manasses and go and give them the word. They are leading many people astray and they are leading a whole nation astray. And the miscreants, the miscreants and the madmen reach out to them. There are makers and breakers of nations. You see? It's not all those people we're talking. It's good we'll talk to them because Jesus died for everyone. But there are some Manasses in the land. They are makers and breakers of the nation. Whatever they do can make everything collapse. Economy can collapse. The polity can collapse. And society can collapse. Security can collapse. Everything can collapse. There are makers and breakers of the nations. And we need to pinpoint them. We need to identify them and look at this Manasseh and reach out to them. It's not just like we're preaching, we're preaching. Identify them. Bring them here. Bring them here. Let them come on a Sunday. Let them come on a Monday. Let them come on a Thursday. Let them hear the word of God. Because whether we like it or not, Manasseh is on the throne. And if nobody reaches him, if nobody interprets for him, everything that he's going through is not going to change. There are mentors and leaders of youths. They are over the youths. And the youths look up to them. And the youths take them like the models. And all those youths, whatever you say, you are reaching them here, you are reaching them there. They're looking at those models. They're looking at those mentors. And they're like Manasseh to them. Whatever they tell them, they lead them astray. And nobody is talking to those mentors. And those models and leaders of the youth reach out to them identify them and make sure that you're giving the message directly unto them what are we going to say about merry makers and media men in the land they have influence merry makers the people who give them the kind of music they want and then but we don't like the music we don't like the sound we don't like what they're doing whether we like it or not millions of people are under them and they lead them the way they want them to go will somebody take the message and go out to those merry makers and go out to all those uh, people media men and give them the message and when they are changed like manasseh was changed eventually and when they turn around like manasseh was turned around eventually many many people will turn to the lord ministry is just beginning 
I said your ministry is just beginning. There are movers and shakers in every field. Movers and shakers in every field. Look at this field. There's, there are movers and shakers there. Economy. There are movers and shakers there. Stock market. There are movers and shakers there. Marketplace. There are movers and shakers there. The people are waiting for them. They are not waiting for preachers. They are not waiting for prophets. They are waiting for the movers and the shakers. And once they tell them, get up, do this, that's what they go to do. If you reach those movers and shakers in every field, all the people under them, then they too, they will come to the Lord. That's why we are taking the challenge today, so that by the grace of God, you become a faithful messenger. Anybody there today? A faithful messenger. And then we will lead all these manasses, we will lead them to repentance. Manasseh repented eventually. Look at all that they had done. The atrocities they had uh, done. All the things, all the people you see, they've done this, they've done this, they've done that. They've not even gone to the level of Manasseh. If Manasseh came to repentance, they're coming to repentance. Came to redemption, they're coming to redemption. Manasseh came to righteousness, they're coming to righteousness. Renewal came. Manasseh himself, he began to repair everything. He began to restructure everything. He began to reconstruct everything. Revival is going to come. Reconstruction is going to come. Reformation is going to come. But it's depending on us that the urgent need is that we become faithful ministers, faithful messengers. We're not just uh, preaching a uh, you know, superficial message. And we're not just preaching over the air. We're going directly to them. Identify those manasses. Identify those movers and shakers. Identify all those media people. Identify those merry makers. Identify everyone, the masters and the mentors and the mothers. Identify them and go and give them the message. Be thinking about them now in your heart. Who do you know? That is a mover. That's a shaker. Who do you know that is a mentor that's a model who do you know that is up there that people are looking up to and you're going to take the message and be thinking about them in your heart now as we read from isaiah chapter 6 isaiah chapter 6 and i'm reading from verse 8 isaiah chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 8 and also i had the voice of the lord saying you're hearing the voice of the lord saying unto you today whom shall i send and who will go for us then said I, somebody there, somebody there, shout it out. Let the heavens hear you. Let the Lord who is asking for faithful messengers hear your voice. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I. Here am I, send me. Rise up and tell the Lord, rise up and tell the Lord, you must do something. You must go somewhere. You must get to somebody. You must touch somebody's life. And you must reach out to these people. The Manasses are there. They are influencing thousands of lives. They are influencing millions of lives. Reach out to them. Reach out to them. Reach out to them. Those miscreant, miscreants, reach out to them. Those mad men, reach out to them. Those make and breakers of the nation reach out to them those masters and leaders reach out to them those mentors and leaders and rulers reach out to them those merry makers and media men reach out to them the movers and the shakers in the land reach out to them let's bring revival in this nation god will use you tell the lord tell the lord here am i send me